that the whole of the African continent is just asleep, waiting for to be saved by, by others. If they don't save us, we shall die, like happened with the slave trade. How can this be? Slave trade went on here for 400 years. These idiot chiefs were here just putting on monkey skins and so on, looking like clowns. So therefore, although this is bad, but, but, but me, there is a good thing in it, to wake, to wake up the Africans, you Africans. Africans are a disgrace to ourselves. Why do you have to depend on, on the outside for everything? Life, you depend on the outside, why? So, even before the, this crisis, I was always struggling with our people. Ebola started here. We are the ones who, who suffered from Ebola. Why would anybody else develop the vaccine not of Ebola, not ourselves? Why? This is a big shame for Africa. Being enemies of somebody's enemy, no, we want to make our own enemies, not, not, not fight other people's enemies. This is our, our, our doctrine. The, the, when there was the Cold War, one day they asked me a question. Are you pro-East or pro-West? I said, you must, you must think I am an idiot. Why do you think my, my main job is to be pro-somebody? I am pro myself, and I deal with all other people according to how they relate with my own interests. These people think we are, we, are, we, are, we are stupid. Such a question is an idiotic question. Whenever issues come up, and some people want us to take positions against Russia, we say, but you people, these people have been with us for the last 100 years. How can we be automatically uh, against them? We have even forgiven our former enemies, the colonialists, the ones who had colonized us, the ones who had actually taken slaves from here and did bad things. We have forgiven them and we are working with them. How can we be against, uh, be against somebody who, who has never harmed us? and who instead helped us. Yes, when the Russians make mistakes, in 1968, I was in the university, and I was in the streets in Dar es Salaam, demonstrating against uh, Brezhnev's decision to invade Czechoslovakia, to overthrow Alexander Dubček. So, if Russia makes mistakes, then we, 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 we tell them, like, like, like we did in 1968. But when they have not made a mistake, we cannot be against them. So this is point number one. This is the historical context which, which those who are ignorant about world affairs should know. Because there seems to be a lot of ignorance in world affairs. People have very limited understanding of philosophy, of strategy, which we don't accept. For us, we have got our clear position as part of the African liberation movement. We know who is who and who is doing what and why, and we know where we stand. Coming to today, we have got a lot of potential. Well, we have, of course, we have been working with, the, with, the, with Russia and with the Soviet Union before, especially in the areas of security. Our first Air Force was trained by, by, uh, by, by Czechs. We used to buy equipment from Czechoslovakia, 
and then the Soviet Union itself, and we have been working with them on the security field. But now we have added new areas. The Joint Permanent Commission is going to meet in October and go into the details of the areas we can cooperate in. Uganda, as you can see, we produce a lot. There's nothing in agriculture in the world that we cannot produce here. So if you need anything, agriculture, coffee, we've got a lot of coffee. We're the biggest producers of coffee in the whole of Africa. Uh, tea, uh, milk, beef, grain, uh, bananas. We're, we're the second biggest producers of bananas in the whole world. So eh, all, all those things. And some of our products go to Russia through through Western Europe. But we can now deal directly with you. And then we have also talked of cooperation or cooperating in space, space science. Uganda would like to have its own small satellite to see what is happening around the, the globe. Then uh, nuclear energy. Although Uganda has got uh, hydropower, and sun and so on. But we have also got a lot of uranium, which we would like to use to generate electricity and for other purposes, medical, uh, bi biotech, and so on. Then, in the area of the, what we call the pathogenic economy, the economy which deals with the vaccines, deals with therapeutics, deals with diagnostics. So all these fields are open. The market here is a big market. You have the internal market of Uganda of 43 million people. Then we have East Africa with a population of three, more than 300 million people. And then you have the whole of Africa, which is part of the CFTA, the, the, the continental free trade area of 1.5 billion people. So we, we, we want to trade with Russia, we want to trade with all countries of the world. We don't believe in uh, uh, being enemies of somebody's enemy. The strategy of the African freedom movement of which we are, we are part is because the human race for the last four and, four and a half million years when human beings have been here has had two oppressions. Oppression by nature Floods, hunger, disease, drought, and oppression by man. When certain men oppress other people. You want to translate? No, no, it's okay. Uh -huh. You understand. So therefore, if you look at our language, in the resistance movement of, and the African freedom fighting movement, we talk of progressive forces versus reactionary forces. Progressive forces are those forces which improve the condition of man, irrespective of their social systems. So that's why if we see China coming up, it is a communist country. We are not communists ourselves here. But they have controlled hunger in China. They have controlled disease. They have pro produced more, 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 more jobs. They have created more electricity. So we are happy with them. We welcome them. Then you, you look at a country like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a, is a monarchy. 
I'm not a monarchist, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Republican. But they are improving the situation in their country. 